But I want to give him infrared because I put it right next to the video camera so that I can pick up any kind of sounds that I don't So here we go. Ready? All right. Um, so what we want to do is now I'm giving you the zeros. So rather than get taking a function and writing the zero or and finding the zeros, now what I'm doing is I'm giving you the zeros. So Ryan, the first thing you're going to want to do is first of all remember the complex conjugate theory. And that's what we went down last class where that we talked about. Whenever I'm given 3i, you know you need to make sure for any complex number you also produce the opposite, right? Or if it was a, or if it was a binomial, you produce that conjugate, right? Or you just always need to make sure for any real number, whenever I'm giving you a zero, a complex zero, you have to produce the conjugate, all right? So now, when given a problem like this, we have x plus 3i, no, I'm sorry, hold on. Now, we said that these are the zeros, right? These are your x-intercepts, your roots. What that means is for each one of these zeros, my x value is equal to that value. So you could say x equals 3i and x equals negative 3i, right? Because isn't, isn't that what we did when we had an equation? Our polynomial or whatever, it said x and this, and we wanted to find the values of x when it equaled zero. So we can say for each one of these, let's set them equal to x. Well, then where did, how did we go, how did we go, how did we get to this point? Remember before that we had them um, equal to zero. So we can now set these equal to zero, so it's x minus 3i. How do I get that? I don't know. Equals zero, and x plus 3i equals zero. So what I did is I put these on the same side and said they equal zero. And why did we get to this point? Because remember we got to here, by, you, by applying the zero product property. So what that means is this times this is going to give us our polynomial. So we got to this point by saying x minus 3i times x plus 3i equals zero. Right? You guys kind of see like me working backwards? If I say, hey, here's my zeros, when I had this point, then we set them both equal to zero by the zero product property. Then we solve for x and got here, and then we can just label them zeros are here. So now I'm just kind of working backwards. So this times this equals zero. That's what, when you find the values of x, those are your zeros. But they're not asking us for the values of zeros. They're asking us, what is the polynomial? So that means I need to multiply this times this. So my favorite way to do this is to create a box. x minus 3i and x plus 3i. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you should automatically notice that this is a difference of two squares. Right? So multiplying should actually be, hopefully, a little bit quicker for you. But let's just do the box so we can remember why it's a difference of two squares and how we can easily do difference of two squares kind of in our head. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3i is a negative 3ix. 3i times x is 3ix, positive 3ix. And 3i times negative 3i is negative 3i times 3i is a negative 9i squared. i squared, remember, is negative 1, so that becomes a positive 9. <coughs> then, what you guys should notice are these two, like terms, are exact opposite each other, so they're going to add up to 0. So our polynomial, we set, rather than saying equals 0, we're going to say equals f of x, right? We'll call our polynomial f of x. So therefore, I can now say that x squared plus 9 equals f of x. So when they say, that's what they say for those problems, right? Tell me what the polynomial is. So that's the polynomial. It's just working backwards, the problems that we've already done. OK? So it's x squared and 9? x squared plus 9. So when you find the same ones, or the opposites, it cancels in the box? Yeah. 